Hi friends, thank you for joining me on Sheena's Lifestyle Journey. Today's topic is a two-part video about the benefits of having a herbal medicine cabinet. Come along and learn why I keep certain herbs in my medicine cabinet, as well as the benefits and uses of those herbs. I'd also like to remind you to um, comment, like, and subscribe to this video if you are new to my channel, um, I normally talk about health, lifestyle, and travel, and so also another item business. That's one of my favorites that's in my medicine cabinet is the organic cinnamon sticks. Cinnamon sticks are very good for us. I utilize that. Um, and here's what it looks like it has a really nice scent to it um, it is good for antiviral and it's also antibacteria it also contains antioxidants and anti-inflammatory effects on the body I, one good thing that I really want to point out about cinnamon sticks is that it relieves digestive discomfort when I make certain teas herbal teas um, such as elderberry tea I often use cinnamon sticks in the elderberry tea um, as well as ginger and here is my um, elderberries uh, I've used it a lot I'm gonna open up the packet so you can see it but um, going back to the cinnamon sticks it uh, it relieves digestive discomfort and also reduces blood pressure it is very very good for making drinks um, and making cinnamon teas okay so as you can see here I have um, this is a very large bag that I purchased and um, it's just basically uh, cinnamons that has been rolled and it, sa it says here it's good for baking goods uh, teas or coffees and cooking and I utilize cinnamon sticks either for for both for both cook baking when you bake banana bread people put cinnamon sticks um, not the stick itself but um, the grated cinnamon in banana bread and several other um, meals that they make but I'm gonna go ahead and open this elderberry so that you can see most of you have possibly heard of elderberry before and elderberry is um, good for colds. It's also an anti-inflammatory um, herb. Uh, people often make teas with um, elderberry, make wines. So here's what the elderberry, dried elderberry looks like. Make sure you can see that. And when you make elderberry tea for the purpose of healing your body, um, what you can do is um, you utilize the ginger. You put a little tum as of ginger. This is one pretty big ginger. Um, and you utilize one tum of ginger, ginger um, the elderberries, and then one cinnamon stick. And I tell you guys, that is so good for when someone has colds or the flu. Ginger is also so good it is a natural root the root itself you can peel it or leave the skin on and boil the make yourself a nice ginger tea with lemons I often use lemons um, as lemons is another item that is in my medicine cabinet often these two together they work so well uh, at, to kind of reduce cold or inflammation in the body um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these two items to the side. I do have a lot of herbs. I think I was like a in herbalist uh, in an afterlife or something. Another item that I find that I use, this is my own container. Um, this is hibiscus tea. And hibiscus tea, often known as sorrel in the Caribbean, is a tea that is used um, it's you can use it as a tea and you can drink it cold. This is how it looks when it's dried. Okay, so 
Um, that is often used for if someone has the cold, you drink it warm. You can also put mix it with ginger as well as with cinnamon sticks. Uh, this makes a really great drink. You can put some honey or agave in it. Some people put sugar. It depends on their lifestyle. But hibiscus tea is one, another item that I do have in my medicine cabinet. Um, I put these out in jars because I often buy large bulks. Because as I, you know, I have always said, let your herbs be your medicine and your medicine your herbs. So this is another herb that I keep in my medicine cabinet on a regular basis. Now I do want you to know that there are several herbs out there and not every herb, although it is good for one thing, agrees with every human or every one. Um, and I say that because red raspberry tea is a popular tea that is used for, it's a popular tea that is used for, um, for, for women who have um, menstrual issues. Here's how the tea looks. This is the dried herb. I keep it in a container because I, I often use it a lot. And it is a tea that is used for anything that's menstrual or any kind of woman's issues. When a woman is going to have a baby, uh, you can use that throughout the, the peg pregnancy because it is safe. Um, but what I was telling you is that red raspberry tea um, and many other herbs does not necessarily, not because it is a herb for healing, it is not necessarily that it, it will work well for you. All right, so moving right along to showing you other items in my um, herbal medicine chest. I do have a large amount of items. Um, this is called yellow dock root, okay? Yellow dock root is an awesome tea. It is a blood cleaner and a cleanser. I keep this in my medicine cabinet because I know I, you're always wanting to cleanse your liver and your um, kidneys. And yellow dock tea is very good. It's a healing herb. This is one of the brands that I often use. I also use a different brand. I use several different brands. The most important thing for me uh, in choosing a herbal tea or medicine choice is that it has to be USD organic. It is so important because the crops are um, where herbs are grown are sprayed so often that it is we're not able to get the full benefits of what the herb uh, is supposed to produce. So yellow dock tea is good. I am going to give you tell you that yellow dock tea or root is bitter. It is very bitter. The, the herb, the natural herb is found in the wild. The roots has like a yellow tinge color to it. And those who often work with um, out in nature, they will tell you that the, the name yellow dock root got its name from the color of the root itself. And I think certain parts of the plants um, has a yellow hint to it, all right? So moving right along, um, I have, I always, always keep, try to keep nettle tea of different sorts in my medicine cabinet. Um, nettle tea is good for iron. It produces iron. It helps to, the body to produce iron. Um, in one of my videos, I've shown you where I had to go and have an iron infusion, and that's because um, a lot of the herbs or even the veggies that I'm taking is not assimilating well into my body. So um, although I do use a lot of herbs to help my body bring it back into balance, um, I've had to lately, because of my situation with the fibroids, I've had to have um, iron infusion. If you don't have to, please. I am not recommending it, but I know I've had to take it because my... Um, my ferritin was extremely low. Anyway, here's a look at what the tea bag looks like for the Nettle for this particular brand. Um, the tea bags are often different, but I like these. These are very simple to use. Sometimes I use two depending on what I um, need from it. 
and um, I'm usually using it just for the main purpose of having uh, of trying to build build my iron level. I didn't show you how the uh, yellow dock herbal tea bag is, but the tea bag is all, all kind of yellowish. It also has like a the root hat powder has like a yellowish tint to it, but that's how the powder looks. Okay, another one of my favorite herbal teas is called Golden Seal Tea. And Golden Seal Tea, um, this is the brand that I use. As I said, I always look for the organic brand. Buddha teas are very good. Um, actually, I have one last Golden Seal Tea. Golden Seal Tea is good for a host of things. And many of these herbs, I may be pointing out like one or two um, benefits that I get from it, but they do, many of these herbs, they produce, they have several, several benefits that they're good for, several things they're good for. Like for instance, Golden Seal Tea. Golden Seal Tea is also anti-inflammatory. It's good for when you have colds. It's good for when you have cuts. If you boil the herb and, or you steep the herb or the, the leaf and you put it on a pot, trust me, golden seal tea or golden seal will heal that cut. Another thing golden seal is good for is pink eye. And I'm telling you because I have utilized it before, um, golden seal tea is good for pink eye. Um, if a child has pink eye or any type of inflammation in the eye, uh, boil the, the tea, the herb itself. Let it steep for a little bit. Make sure it's cool. And and not only that you would make sure it's cool, you're gonna put it in the, the child's eye or wash it out with the eye. Wash it out. Um, use it. Use the liquid, the water, to wash the eyes out. And that is very, 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 it's a very healing um, and soothing thing for the eye. And I'm telling you, like in one day, in about one whole day, 24 hours, you should see that eye clear up. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a disclaimer here. I am not a doctor, and I may put it <laughs> throughout this uh, entire video as I am talking about uh, many of the herbs that I have in my medicine cabinet. I am not a doctor. By any means, I am not diagnosing nor treating any individuals. Should you need to be, should you have a problem and you need, you should seek medical attention and take the advice of your physician, okay? This is only a video that tells you what I have in my medicine cabinet and what I use a lot of these herbs that I have in my medicine cabinet for. All right, so uh, moving right along, I, I love golden seal tea. It is one of my favorite teas. Um, another tea or another herb that is very good for you is red clover. I don't have the tea. I've used the tea several times before. And then I'm gonna go back to what I was saying with the red raspberry tea. Now, red clover tea. It's good for, it's a blood cleaner. Anything that cleans the blood is good for um, assisting with um, the, the recovery of cancer. Okay, so red clover is a blood cleaner. Uh, when I was younger, I used to read a lot of herbal books and um, red clover was one of the teas uh, in a book that I read called Back to Eden, one of the teas that was used by the physician in Back to Eden when he talked about you know, him helping patients to um, heal their cancer. Um, it is a blood cleaner, and um, I'm gonna tell you some of the use, other uses for the red clover tea. Okay, 
so red clover tea is good for any type of respiratory issues, um, eczema, skin psoriasis, so any kind of skin disorders, um, inflammatory conditions like um, arthritis, and also um, they have stated that um, it is also good for women's health problems such as menopause and menstrual systems. Now, red clover is a beautiful, brightly colored um, flower, red flower, and that's where it got its name red clover from because it looks like a clover plant, all right? Now, this particular um, plant is good, is high in nutrients like magnesium, niacin, phosphorus, potassium, thymine, and vitamin C. Okay, so that's another item that's in my medicine cabinet. So once again, they use activated charcoal um, on you. If you've uh, encountered like any kind of fish poison or something where they would need to um, bind um, whatever it is, whatever poison that you have ingested, um, activated charcoal is used for as a binding agent and it's used to bind and pull or draw certain uh, toxins out of the body. Now, this active, activated charcoal is a black powder, and I'm gonna tell you, uh, you know, as I said, they often use it in the emergency room. I'm just opening the bottle right now, but they often use it in the emergency room to, um, it's as a toxin, toxin observer, absorber, I'm sorry. So that's how it looks, it's black, just like that, okay? And it's used as a toxin absorber. It's also used in cosmetics. It is not toxic at all, you know? Um, it's actually made from charcoal bricks and um, I don't know how they scientifically ac activate it or make it active, um, but it involves some kind of heating uh, in order for it to be activated, but um, I would um, de I would definitely suggest to have this in your medicine cabinet instead of using tums. This is a great way to ease any kind of digestive or stomach discomfort. Now, um, it can also be used to assist with filtering the kidneys of any kind of undigestive toxins from drugs, okay? And that's one of the reasons why you would find that in the emergency rooms, they use the, the product called activated charcoal. Now, what I have here is a small list of um, products. You don't necessarily have to purchase these items from the individuals that I have here. Um, but when you do purchase them, try to go as organic as possible. I utilize a lot of herbs. I utilize a lot of herbs. And because our food is so depleted, I also have in my medicine cabinet several different types of vitamins, okay, and minerals. I have several different types of vitamins and minerals. I'm going to put this back here. Um, one of those vitamins that I have is activated charcoal. I am going to suggest that activated charcoal is kept in everyone's medicine cabinet. Anyone who has a problem, if you have digestive issues and you want to pick up Tums, activated charcoal is the best Thing for you. It must be activated. It must stay activated charcoal. You can purchase any brand. Um, I tend to get several different brands. Over the years, I've gotten several different brands. Um, one of the places that I started getting activated charcoal from was Puritan Pride because they would have like, you can buy two, get one free, buy two, get two free. If you can get them like that, that is one of the best ways to get activated charcoal. Okay, I'm also going to tell you like, when you're in the hospital, they use activated charcoal um, on you. Vitamin C. It is so important for us to have vitamin C, um, especially with what's been going on uh, today in 
around the world. You know, you need to boost your immune system and the vitamin C is so important. I'm just gonna turn the bottle around for you to see, you know, I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, which way? Uh, the only ingredient that it does have in there I'm gonna read is just the vitamin C as calcium abs absorbent and calcium as calcium as absorbent. Lemon bioflavins routine and a word that I cannot pronounce, but I'll spell it H-E-S-P-E-R-I-D-I-N. But anyway, which way? This is buffered vitamin C as it assimilates very well in the body. Okay, this is another item that I do have in my medicine cabinet. Now guys, you know how it is when you get constipated. And it's often hard to do anything. And they said that most of the disease begins in the colon. Because the colon is so impacted. And um, it's often encouraged that we, we need to try to release our colon as much as possible. And the time, it's stating that we go to, most people go to the bathroom at least once a day. Unfortunately, there are others out there who probably goes every three days or every four days. And when you see that, your body is constipated. I, as in most normal Americans do, or not even Americans, but those who live in developed countries where we don't have enough fibers in our body, we tend to be constipated. We don't drink enough water nor have enough fiber because of the food that we eat. When you eat a lot of pasta, that does not provide um, fiber. Sometimes even rice does not, depending on the type of rice you're using, it does not provide enough fiber. Um, so with that said, one, another item that I have in my medicine cabinet is called Smooth Move. Now this is really good. Whenever I, I feel am like constipated, I go for this. This literally moves you within 24 hours or less. Okay, I, I love using this. The tea tastes really great. There's several different options. This option that I do have here is the Sena Peppermint option. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you what all is in this. It's organic Sena. You have peppermint leaf, licorice root, fennel fruit. And these other herbs that you see listed here are also herbs, individual herbs that I keep in my medicine cabinet. Um, I'll open the cabinet shortly and I'll show you, you know, how all of that looks like, but I just wanted to kind of get give you a quick overview just now of some of the most important items that I keep in my medicine cabinet. Okay, so another herb that I use in my garden uh, is uh, what is called the lemongrass tea. I am going to um, just get a few. Um, my husband cut this tree down just a little bit the other day because it was so filled with um, a lot of dried lemongrass, but I'm gonna just take a few um, this morning because I do need um, a few sprigs of the leaves to make my herbal tea. Um, but, you know, I'd like to show you guys, um, even in my garden, I do have certain herbs that I use a lot. One of those herbs is called the uh, lemon grass. And um, you would find that you can get lemongrass in a lot of the Thai meals and um, a lot of Asian meals. They use lemongrass a lot in the Caribbean. We use this, we, they call this fever grass. Um, when you smell the leaf, it has like a lemon scent. Um, also, if you ever heard of, um, if you've ever heard of the, sorry, I lost my trend of thought, um, but I'll go ahead and move along to another herb that I have in my garden uh, that I use a lot in terms of um, healing and for herbal teas. Okay, here is another plant. It, this plant is called basil. Basil can be used for um, for salads. You can use it to make certain types of pestos. You can even use it for teas. These are very, very good teas and they have such an, a nice aromatic scent. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take a few leaves and uh, make a herbal tea out of that uh, for me to me, uh, to give to my kids and for myself. Okay, friends. Okay, so um, I just got some, I peeled up a, a piece of ginger from my hair, from a piece of this large ginger that I have. I had, I peeled um, some ginger 
a little tub of ginger. I have a pot of boiling water for my tea. I'm gonna put that ginger, as you can see, I put it in the teapot. Now the herbs that you saw that I picked outside, I made sure I washed them. And um, as someone who handles herbs, um, I do want to let you know that it is better to, to boil roots and leaves, boil roots only, you boil them in the water, and then when you have anything to do with the leaves, um, my hands aren't free, so that's why you can, you just see the herbs. Now these are the, here's the basil and the lemongrass that I picked as part of my herbal apothecary or my herbal um, closet. These leaves will be steeped in the water. Um, another leaf that I tend, leaf that I tend to utilize is uh, soursop. And I know it, I don't know the medical term, I think it's called, it starts with a G, gabazo, um, or guaviola, or graviola um, leaf. We know it in the Caribbean and, you know, in Central America as soursop leaf. Um, I have the dried leaves. You do not, you never, never, <coughs> excuse me, you never boil leaves. You always steep them. So once the water is heated enough, you just put them down. Why? Um, roots are much thicker and they need um, more, um, they need to be drawn a lot more. So here I am, my, um, my ginger root is boiling. I actually cut it off of this large ginger right there. Wait, um, here you can see I have my uh, ginger boiling. I'm gonna turn that off because in a few minutes I'm going to go ahead and put in the basil leaves that I washed. And I, I only wash them, I, I probably don't need to, um, but it's such a habit being that um, so much out there, you don't even know what's going on uh, out there when they spray things into the atmosphere. You don't know what falls on your fruits or veggies. So even here, as here in America, um, even though they say things are USDA organic or they use pesticide free, <coughs> excuse me, items, We actually don't know what we are ingesting, okay? If you live like in s certain parts of Central America, like Belize and Panama and possibly Mexico, thanks for watching. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe and so important if you have a medicine cabinet please comment below and tell me what kinds of stuff you have in your medicine cabinet.